It's my pleasure today in the Palm Harbor Museum to introduce the grandson of the founder of this house, Thomas Hartley and Ida, Ar Ida Hartley, who lived here. And their grandson is Bill Pulaski with me today. Welcome, Bill. Wonderful Thank to have you. Thank you. Um, tell me what your full name is and tell me the spelling of your last name. Okay. My full name is William Baynard Pulaski. William is after uh, Judge Hartley, my mm -hmm. granddaddy. Mm -hmm. He's William, and he had an uncle that was William. I'm William, and, we, and I have a grandson named William, so that's a family mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. But my middle name is Baynard, B-A-Y-N-A-R-D, which is rather peculiar. But they named me after the druggist that befriended them when I was born. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. in Tarpon Springs, mm -hmm. and um, Pulaski is really a southern name. We're not, uh, the, the name transported by my grand, grandfather's bloodline on, on dad's side. Uh, and his, his father, no, his, yeah, that's right, his father was a Polak, I think, Polish. Mm -hmm. And, um, married a German, or, or sub, I can't recall exactly how that happened, but he um, came to this country and immediately when he hit port he, in New Jersey, he was conscripted into the Union Army. They could buy in, so a wealthy person bought him and put him in the Army, and he didn't serve but about six months, and um, then came south. As a, he, he herded his, herd his sheep, Mm -hmm. from here, from Miss, Mississippi, uh, from the New Jersey area to Mississippi. And then he crossed over to the Bay and found Pinellas County. And there was the place down uh, at the corner of County Road 1 and Curlew Road. The northwest corner was the McLean place. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, he, he worked for Judge McLean and then gradually um, got some land and out at um, actually the Fecting property was, um, I can't think of the name of that lake out there now. I don't know, Lake uh, Tarpon? Well, it's a smaller one to the south. Okay. I'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's sort of mm -hmm. the background. Of, my dad's, but Pa now, Grandpa, and, and I will slip occasionally and call him Pa because that's what we always did. Always called Your him grandfather pa. was called Pa? Grandpa Hartley. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. All and, the kids uh, called him that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we all called him Pa. We were, we were all raised together. My aunt had four in his mm -hmm. house here, and Mom and Dad had me and my brother down, we were a quarter of a mile down Curlew Road, I mean down Belcher, mm -hmm. and um, he was the first man to open a road down there. He had to chop his way in there, and right. um, and he planted a little grove, and he had five acres, and um, and that's where my brother and I um, came into being, but he, Frank was born in this house, mm -hmm. right a room mm -hmm. across the mm -hmm. hall. Frank was your older brother by about 10, ten years? 10 years. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And just the two of you boys were the children of your, your parents, and but children. then you had your four cousins, so you were all kind of kinfolk close by. We're going to talk about that property down Belcher Road a little yeah. later, but sure. this is such a wonderful house, and we are so mm -hmm. blessed to have it in this county and, and that it's been saved and so on. Um, so uh, I, I just want to be sure that I we've talked about you and Frank, but... Tell me what the date of your birthday. When's your birthday? Uh, January eighth of nineteen thirty three. Okay, so you just had a birthday, and so yeah. we're mm -hmm. we're glad to have you here. And we lost Frank uh, late last year, and and that was a real loss to this community, and I know to you personally, to us at the museum too, because we yeah. we uh, saw you and Frank driving through the driveway, and often you oh, know, yeah, thought he, about you, I, waved, and, and he of loved the house because. I think he had a, an, a firm attachment to it because in his childhood they lived, Grandpa had a 
well, you can call it a grove house now, like mm -hmm. the little one in the back, mm -hmm. only this one in the back out there, it would, it would be like a subdivision home compared to what they lived in. Mm -hmm. It didn't have any paint or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just a little shack. Mm -hmm. And finally, and, and Frank spent his early years down there. Mm -hmm. And actually, he would spend more time up in the Hartley house mm -hmm. because Grandma was there mm -hmm. and Grandpa mm -hmm. was here. Mm -hmm. And um, he just, he loved it here. He loved the house. And that, I think that carried over all the way through his life. Yeah, and as he I got older so and older, he loved the house more and more. Right. I, I could understand that. So let's talk about your grandparents and just kind of what they were like. I, I'm, I, I look at their picture that is right over our shoulder here, and they look very stoic and kind of serious and so on. I suspect they weren't like that at all. But tell me about Pa and what did you call your grandmother? What did the pa. kids? Grandpa. What about your grandmother? Grandma. Grandma. She was uh -huh. always grandma, okay, but he so was always pa. Pa and grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So tell us about what were they like? When, did they have a sense of humor? Well, were they pa fun to was, do things? Pa was a, a, a big man and loved to eat and um, hard worker and had the ladder factory there and in my time. and. Before that time, he had done several uh, little things, but um, he was um, very kind, very long-suffering. I never saw him get mad at anybody, and uh, or even speak roughly to someone. He was a very kind fellow, and um, and we we all loved loved him. He was very slow motion. Long has carried over on some of us. <laughs> it didn't move very fast, mm -hmm. and um, but he he did very well at what he did. Uh, he, he wouldn't do a, a slipshod job, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, before and, the ladder factory, did he have? Yes. I mean, what did he do? Did he? Uh, how did this well, property yeah, get sustained? Actually, actually, he was he first made cypress ladders here. He built a shop, and, and you know, so I still think back on it, and I think about the ingenuity he had, because I love the old shop, and of course it was such a ramshackle thing, the way he made it. I mean, when he started up the old engine, you'd hear the belts flopping and, <laughs> and the building shaking a little bit. That was all, that was all normal, uh -huh. but he'd get the sappers poles out of the the swamps on the east of the lake, like Lake Tarpon out there, and we had kids would peel the poles, get the bark off of them, and then. Wait, let me stop you, Bill. How did they get the poles from the other side of Lake Tarpon to here? They did had they? an old A model Ford truck. Uh huh. Okay. And um, and um, this was after the days of the mules. He mm -hmm. had. Oh, he but, had mules um, too. Yeah, and. Um, we peel poles, and he'd split them with a rip saw, and then had a, a, a drilling machine. He made the holes and, and made the rounds by hand on a lathe. Mm -hmm. He'd take that chisel mm -hmm. and the lathe. Was, mm -hmm. He'd make those rounds, some of them like that, some like that. And um, were the rungs made of cypress too? Mm -hmm. Were the rungs made of cypress as well? No, that, they were hard pine. I see. And he wouldn't have anything but heart pine. He'd mm -hmm. get a big pine tree and we'd saw it up in pieces and he took a, had a, had a, um, what was it called, a broad axe in those days, only about that wide, and split off the sap off of it and take the heart, which was uh, really the, the strong part of the tree. So and, it was um, heart of pine, uh, yes. And he would cut that up into squares and put the squares in the lathe and bake them and then around. And mm -hmm. he had an endless process. He was, he, it was a beautiful process, but it just didn't produce. Mm -hmm. It didn't produce a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. but it was. Well, let's explain to the people that are watching this. Why was there a ladder factory here? Why were ladders important? Ladders. He. he um, he supplied the local citrus industry. You know, and in those days, Pinellas County 
produce more grapefruit than any other county in the state of Florida. So you can imagine what it looked like. Wow. It was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. them, and the grapefruit were of stellar quality, mm -hmm. mainly because the county is surrounded by, by water. Mm -hmm. and, and you didn't have to worry about the freezes too much. And um, he supplied ladders for the pickers to go up in the trees and pick. Mm -hmm. And that's what my daddy did. He was a fruit picker, mm -hmm. <laughs> which mm -hmm. was not a really, it wasn't an upscale job back in those days, but he was fast and he, could make, he made good money at it because mm -hmm. he could fill a, fill a box real fast. Mm -hmm. And um, Do they get paid by the boxes? Mm -hmm. sent? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do you have any idea how much your grandfather sold his ladders for? I can recall that some of me sold, I believe, and I'm not really sure of this, but I think around 12, 13 cents a foot, something like that. 12 or 13 cents a foot? Yeah. Oh my, and so the average ladder was how many feet? Oh, about... 10 feet, more tw than that, or 20? He'd go anywhere from, I say, a 28, 21 to a 28, mm -hmm. sometimes over 30. Ah, wow. Did, were the Grove owners responsible for purchasing the ladders, or yes. did the people have to buy their well, own ladders? They came ladders right here and bought them. Right. Okay. They'd come bring a truck from all over in the uh, central part of the state just mm -hmm. to get a load to his ladders. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me that your grandfather was also a very generous man, that he was willing to give things to people and give money, lend money when needed and that kind of thing. Is that true or am, yes. I, am, am I going off on he some was, tangent uh, that isn't correct? He was a, a man that was generous to a fault. He would, he would literally, I mean, if he saw someone in need, he would help them. And, uh, especially young ministers. He had a, you know, he was a local, not a local, he was called a, a local preacher back in those days, but it was really a licensed Methodist mm -hmm. minister. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a heart for Southern College when it was built mm -hmm. in, in Sutherland, mm -hmm. which is Palm Harbor. and and. Uh, uh, he he was very generous with, uh, with with the money that he had, and to the extent that um, we were never a rich family, mm -hmm. we were very um, mm -hmm. very um, mm -hmm. middle class well, Floridians at that time. Yes. And Let's talk a little bit about your grandmother, Miss Ida. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Everybody loved Miss Ida. She was a she's a a little, she was a spark plug that ignited Grandpa. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, when he got kind of slow about doing something, <laughs> Grandma would have a few words and he'd take off and, and, and get it done. <laughs> but she was a lovely lady and um, a little short mm -hmm. uh, woman and he was big and tall and clumsy and, and uh, never did. My wife told me that, and I said, "You're getting just like your grandfather. You don't pick up your feet when you walk." Uh, mm. Well, I can't. I mean, <laughs> it's easier to drag them. He, and um, he drug his feet, you know. And, but um, Grandma would. Um, she was. She took care of him. She made sure that um, he had clean overalls and shirts and everything, and warm in the winter time and. And she cooked the food he liked to eat, you mm -hmm. know, crap food. We did. We were raised on that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, grits and beans and and fat pork. That's that's bad, but uh, the crackers ate it then. And um, of course, she had lots of exercise then too. So oh, everybody was working hard. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He'd go to work very early in the morning and then um, work late in the evening. Mm -hmm. But he took a siesta after lunch and came in near the, he had a cot that sat right over there under that window. Mm -hmm. And um, um, he'd bring the St. Petersburg Times in, they could afford that, I think it was a dime a week. And um, 
he would read for about five minutes and then you'd hear him <laughs> snoring. He'd sleep for about an hour and get up and go work till dark. I see. So, and Grandma was, of course, and Aunt Lucy and her children were living here. Mm -hmm. And, um, boy, when they all got to the table, they had a crowd in the big dining room. Right. Where, where did you eat? I mean, I, we'll talk a little bit about the kitchen and what that looked like. Did you eat in the kitchen or was there mm -hmm. a separate room no. that was the dining room? Where you have, where the office is now was the dining that was room. your dining room. The partition south of the office was not there. Mm -hmm. And the stairway was exposed to the big dining room up the, up the south end. Mm -hmm. The stairs mm -hmm. to get up, st hmm. that were never finished mm -hmm. by him. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But the, the room was big. It was large and um, nice and roomy. Mm -hmm. I love the ceiling still. Right. The high ceilings still are nice. Have nice tall ceilings. And um, and they had a big big dining table. And of course, there's seven of them when they all got to the table. There's seven of them there, and um, and they had you know you, you didn't have balanced meals those days. You you know, no no salad or anything like that. You can get corned beef hash and rice or, or grits and gravy and and always biscuits or cornbread. Mm -hmm. so it was typically southern. For dessert, did you have pies and cakes mm -hmm. for dessert? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grandma or Aunt Lucy would bake pie once in a while, usually for Sunday. Mm -hmm. That that Sunday dinner was a big thing. You have the yeah, you have pie or cake usually on Sunday. Uh huh. But um, it was a it was a happy existence, you know. What about a garden? Did you did you have a garden where you grew things that were for the table, like greens and yeah. you know root vegetables, carrots yeah. and oh. potatoes, and so on? Grandpa had raised certain things. But he wasn't, um, and that was rather surprising because his background of his family in Illinois were farmers, mm -hmm. and um, and they owned when he bought the land. That's, this land. Yes, great grandfather mm -hmm. James Hartley bought it. Mm -hmm. They came down from Illinois, and um, because of health reasons, I think, and. They bought 80 acres here at this corner, mm -hmm. and right across from the funeral home down there where you see that nice, beautiful retention pond, Yes, they owned all that. Oh, uh -huh. And that's where they farmed. I see. The, the Hartleys, the uncle, Uncle Tom, Thomas William, he never married. and. And to hook this back to the shack, mm -hmm. that's the residence of Uncle Thomas and later Mom and Dad and mm -hmm. and Frank lived. Mm -hmm. lived so there. that was, did he homestead the property or did he buy no. the property? No, he bought it from the Whiters family and um, oh. they were old settlers and, um, right. and it had a bearing grove on it at the time. And um, With primarily grapefruit or oranges too? Oranges. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, the trees bore until well, maybe I was 20, 25 years old. One of the big freeze wiped everything out, and and um, but he he never was uh, good with the citrus that part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, he 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 didn't produce fruit like like you have to. to to make a good living with it. I think they sold it, but that's about all. Are you talking now about your grandfather or grandpa. your great-grandfather? Okay, grandpa, okay. Yep. So he wasn't really a farmer, but did your grandmother, I mean, most grandmothers had a little family garden that was, you know, to, enough to give them some food for the table. Do, do you remember having a garden here Down, in uh, the yard? Yeah, right, it would be right north of where my brother's house is down uh -huh. there now. Okay. And Grandpa would plant a lot of stuff. The thing I I remember that he did did well was okra. Okra, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember going down there with Grandma to pick the uh, pick the okra. 
Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and he had other things growing. And, um, and of course, there's all kinds of volunteer plants. This place was loaded with guava trees. And, and um, east of the house there, he had a nice key lime tree, which was huge. And, and uh, the old avocado trees sat there, never bare, never, they never bore anything. And, um, but he had um, several different kinds of, of, um, of stuff growing around. And of course, chickens. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a shaky yard. Mm -hmm. Just let mm -hmm. them run, mm -hmm. and they'd come into the house at night. They had a home, and <laughs> and um, they, nobody ever worried about. It. Only thing you worried about was finding the eggs. You know. Yeah, really. <laughs> Bill, I asked you about uh, some of the plants in the gardens, but you used a term that I think most people don't know what that means, and that is volunteer trees. What does that mean? Oh, that means it comes up by itself. Uh huh. Just a bird drops a seed or something like that. And there you go. And it comes up. It's volunteers. Uh-huh. And uh, man, they, she had, well, Grandma, of course, I think we noted that she she made gua the best guava jelly. Oh, gosh. And, and, and I wish I had some of her guava jelly because that's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. She made it. and, and um, Do you have a recipe? Mm. She didn't <laughs> no, have a recipe, no, probably. No, 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 no. Um, but she, um, she sold it. Oh, did she? Yeah, you, you know, the, the coachman name is familiar to you. Yes. Uh huh. Well, the coachman's at that time had a little shop down next to the railroad track there. Mm -hmm. On Old Coachman the, Road, right? Coachman Road, and right. it had was a log cabin, mm -hmm. and Miss Coachman would come up and buy. Grandma's jelly mm -hmm. and sell it in her little store. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was a that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. of course, Grandma would made plenty to sh give us, and mm -hmm. my mother would make it occasionally. Mm -hmm. But we didn't we didn't have any guava trees on mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. on our property. Dad didn't like guavas. And he he had we had catley guavas, but not these big old guavas. He said no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. None of those on my place. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since we're talking about trees, and of course I know this beautiful purple tree, uh, purple flowering tree yes. out in front is not a, a fruit tree, but and it was probably planted. But do you know anything about the history of that jacaranda tree that's so gorgeous? Because yeah, it's a landmark for this place. We always tell people, be sure and go by there and mm -hmm. see it when it's in My bloom. aunt planted it. Okay. No, I... And that's Lucy, Aunt Lucy? Yeah, mm -hmm. my, that was Aunt, Aunt Lucy Berry mm -hmm. and Lucy Hartley Berry, mm -hmm. my mother's old sister. And uh, she had two brothers and one sister. And, and of course, Aunt Lucy was an integral part of our family because I treated her and uh, like like another mom, you know, because mm -hmm. we were all raised so close together. And mm -hmm. and she she planted that. Oh, it's uh, I I I could get hold of a date. It would be probably. Mm, it's it's not as old as you think it is. It's a uh, it's a fast growing tree, and and she just uh, stuck it out there in the front yard, and and it did you well. You may be the forties, you think? Probably so. Uh huh. Mm, probably, probably the late forties. Well, it's a signature tree, and it should yeah. be something that we're very proud of. We certainly are at the oh, yeah. Palm Harbor Museum because yes. it is a landmark. It's gorgeous. Let's talk a little bit about the physical part of this house. Uh, we're sitting in this room called the par we call it the parlor. Uh, yeah. um, what did you call it? Well, we call it the front room. The front room. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. I mean. I got my brother said, "No, you don't use that term. You call it the parlor." I said, well, it's the front room to me. So, but anyway, this room was the front room, and the room next door with the with the fireplace was Grandma and Grandpa's room, and uh, that was a social area for Friday nights. I see. Those were happy Friday nights. All the kids would get home from school, didn't have to go tomorrow. Be winter time, build a big fire in the fireplace, and we'd sit around the fire and mm -hmm. just, you know, 
no television, no radio, none of that stuff. Uh, we just sit around and talk. And, mm -hmm. and, um, Did you and play games sometimes? or No, not no? usually. We, we didn't get introduced to that until a little later, and somebody uh, gave us a Monopoly set, and that mm -hmm. was, we really we spent hours playing Monopoly. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, but it was a very quiet life. And um, uh, very, very sedate, and the um, well, my grandpa's bedroom, of course, um, was it's it's a large room. Yes. By today's standards, right? And, and she had her sewing machine right in that that bay that mm -hmm. bay, bay window. Yes. Right. And um, and she sewed a lot, quilted a lot. Did she? Beautiful mm -hmm. quilts. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Practical yeah. quilts, I assume that mm -hmm. need practical things that people needed for their oh, yeah, for their home. Absolutely. She and she made. Um, you know, she. As I mentioned, she made Grandpa's shirts. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me about Grandpa's shirts, because because you told me that your pa didn't like collars on his shirts. I yeah, think. Yeah. So she made them without a collar? Made them without a collar, just uh -huh. a band, uh -huh. a button. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was a little woman and he was tall, and but she always had to button his collar. <laughs> Daddy, your collar is not buttoned, I mean, okay. Mm -hmm. But, um, oh, we made use, back in those days, you made common use of feed sacks. Oh, feed and sacks, what were they? I don't know what that is. Um, well, we had chickens, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of chickens over at our place, and we bought um, chicken feed in 100-pound bags, and so mom would make our sheets out of them. So those bags were like a fabric? They were. And did they have a design good, on them? Fairly good quality uh, uh, fabric. You'd be surprised to see the nice quality, but the the... The thing she did was, we had the old watch pot out and build a fire under it, you know, heat the water and wash the clothes. And that was outside? That was outside. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, and she would take those those bags, and they all had Purina on the side <laughs> of them, or Hales and Hunter, or something like mm -hmm. that. And she'd put them in that broiler out there and, and boil them maybe two or three times to get all those things yeah, out. Print on it. Uh -huh. And she'd take four of those sacks and fit them together. And that's what she put on the bed for us to sleep on. I, did, I don't think I had a, a store-bought sheet until I was in college. Wow. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but they weren't really comfortable. I, you know, that, uh, they're like a new shirt or something like that <laughs> whenever you slept on them the first few nights. It, Sticky. You need to soften them up, eh? <laughs> they lasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so um, and she made, mm -hmm. she would take flour sacks, you know, you'd get the, the cloth flour sacks, and she made all of her dish towels and mm -hmm. washcloths and mm -hmm. um, towels to dry yourself with when mm -hmm. you were fortunate enough to get a bath. And, mm -hmm. and uh, right. And it's so, so speaking about taking a bath, with, so how did you bathe? I mean, th did you have running water in the house? No. And you didn't, okay, so. This house, that house. Now, which house are we talking about? I'm talking about this house for now. This house for mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. No, uh, it was it was very late getting in, and they, the, the bath was strictly done in, in a wash tub. Uh, mm -hmm. And... Um, so how did you haul water into the house if you needed it, or did you just use it out in the yard? In a bucket. Uh-huh. Yeah, in the well Rain down at the in. well. Mm -hmm. That was the oldest, Aunt Lucy's oldest boy. That was his job. Was to, every night he had to go down to the well and draw two buckets of water, and there was a stand there in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I put two two buckets of water there, and, and, um, and he had to bring the wood in for the wood stove. And um, and that was just standard. You had to have that when you first, first got up in the morning, they'd go in and kindle a fire in the wood stove and get mm -hmm. it going. Mm -hmm. 
so you, so they could cook breakfast, and then you're, it was cold. That's the only place you had to get. Right. Unless you wanted to come in, and mm -hmm. nobody fired this thing up unless it was a weekend. The mm -hmm. weekend. This was a weekend. This this room. This is what did you say that? Weekend. Uh huh. Oh, weekend room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Usually, and um, the, but the fireplace in, in Grandma's room. That's what we always call that. Mm -hmm. um, was used frequently. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if it was a cold morning, you might go in there to get dressed and so on. Okay. Possibly. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. that's right. Right. Yeah. Or dress really quickly. I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> It was cold. Yes. Do, was this thought of, by the way, as, as kind of a dog run house or not? Was was this open at both ends, like some of the some of the houses are, because it has a hallway that goes straight through. Yeah. So I've and, never tried quite and to it figure was out years it's before they ever had any kind of doors. They have screen door at the end of each hallway. Oh. And the, and the high ceilings and that ventilation and you see the profusion of windows. Windows, yes. Um, well, it was all done to, to stay cool in the long, hot summers. Mm -hmm. But boy, let me tell you, when a north wind came in the wintertime, it came through that hall. Mm -hmm. Bitter cold. Oh, gosh. If you had to cross the hall, it was like crossing US-19. <laughs> Bill, terrible. I can tell you remember that <laughs> succinctly, that, that oh, yeah. memory of how cold it was. The front porch did it have a did it have a larger porch than the little porch we have on it now? Uh, the porch that was originally built for the house, I never did see, and uh, the, it came around the front of the house all the way around. The only thing I knew was when I was a little kid, the um, there were some beams sticking out of the, out of the um, masonry and that was they always told us that was the roof of the porch mm -hmm. but the porch was never finished never got done no. uh -huh. I and see. it was oh, on the west side of the house too mm -hmm. and it never mm -hmm. it never got finished mm -hmm. and let's go back to the the building of this house now first of all um, it was started about a hundred years ago wasn't it it was a not maybe not Maybe a little bit less than that. Maybe 1915, 16, something like that. No, it's, no, it's older than that. It's, um, it's, um, see, my, my dad and mom built theirs in uh, 1929, and this was way back in... Early 1900s? Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, but the story is that they bought the forms for the br the the blocks on this house through Sears Roebuck. Is yeah. that true, or yeah? Am, the, is that, that just kind they of call, a, that's a block machine? Uh huh. And it was a very um, it had the, the the metal and it was poured that full of concrete and let it set up good. Then you could tip it over and take. If you're careful, you take that thing and, and they set it out and let it cure. Mm -hmm. So that's the way the box were made. Mm -hmm. How long would they take to cure? Do you have any idea? I really, I don't know. I, I would think it would take at least six months, something like that. Oh. Probably not that long. Um, so what did they use to make the concrete? Was there sand on this property or did they have to get it from somewhere? They're over in the scrub. Uh -huh. Right over that, over. Uh -huh. There are the, about it, where Highland Woods is now. Hmm? About where Highland Woods is now, where your yeah, where your family mm -hmm. home yeah, was between, eventually. It was between here and where we lived, uh -huh. and that the scrub in there, and that's that's what you call piney woods, you know. And, mm -hmm. and the, the the sand was just as white as snow, mm -hmm. and they dug the so sand. So they brought there. it up here. Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. right, and. Um, and mix the concrete and 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 so it took about three years to build the house but gosh I guess yes it, it, and it must have I mean this is a big house and a lot of blocks that they had to make the curiosity and various stories that I've heard about the pink mortar do you know anything about that why is the mortar pink <laughs> 
I, I never heard that. I don't, I don't know why the mortar's pink, but I know one thing, that the way when they, I don't know whether Grandpa or Grandma one decided they wanted pink mortar, uh, that dye that they used in there was good stuff because it's still pink. Really? So it, it was a dye? That was used something something they put mm -hmm. in the um, mm -hmm. in, in the, in the uh, mortar itself mortar that when they put the blocks together. See, we always hear this story about the kids put mulberry juice or some other kinds of juices I, I in it, but you don't. I, I didn't hear that. You don't I, know that's they, true. They um, they had some way to make the pink mortar though, and uh, and it lasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has. It's lasted very well. Mm. So the room, getting back inside the house, the room behind Grandma and Grandpa's bedroom, mm -hmm. that smaller room, which we call the children's room, what, what was that room? Well, that's, ba yeah, that's basically, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Only, uh, the only baby, uh, I can always remember it being referred to as Uncle Orion's room. Mm -hmm. And Uncle Orion was a little guy, he was the youngest one. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the, the philosophy of building that, that way was good because they got a, had a door there and they could check in take on the them. young children and put mm -hmm. them in there. Mm -hmm. But um, I only, of course, I only know about Uncle Orion right. living in there. Right, right. But um, that was what they kind of mm -hmm. called it that. And mm -hmm. then later on, when Aunt Lucy moved here with her four children, they had plenty of space. Mm -hmm. and, um, the, describe the kitchen then. We're going across the hall now. Describe what the kitchen looked like. Did it have a big wood stove or uh, yeah, uh, the, did it um, have refrigeration? Did it have a sink and, and a dishwasher? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, um, now the, the one thing they did that was, was bad, I think, it takes away from the um, really the character of the kitchen. They took the flue down. The, the uh, you can still see the the base of the flue in the cellar, mm -hmm. and um, it was made out of fire brick, and it went right on through the ceiling, right on up. And um, the big big cast iron range. She had a big stove, and it sat right in front of that. Mm -hmm. Flew and and uh, you know you could f fire that thing up and get the room warm if you needed to. Right. It had a big oven mm -hmm. and then of course the wood stove. You know, yeah, Was that always. on the west side of the house? On the west side or the north side? That's north. Okay. Yeah. It's the north. Okay. And you know you know where the where the office is. Yes. It's it was right north of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the two rooms were always connected by that wide. Mm -hmm. space or mm -hmm. door and um, uh, they um, they had wood wood in a, in a box there to feed that big stove and and that's that's basically where everything was done the water was heated there the um, cooking was all done there mm -hmm. And baking, there was an oven, I oh, assume. Oh, yeah, the best mm -hmm. kind of bake. Mm -hmm. the oven the was always and... on, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, and, um, and I remember that <clears throat> because we had a similar stove in our home. And Mom would make the toast in the morning, and she just put bread on a, on a cookie sheet and put it in that oven, mm -hmm. toast it for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Mm -hmm. and uh, but. But they um, they did all of the all the cooking and washing the dishes and cleaning up and everything, but used the big dining room always. Always I ate see. at the big dining I room see. and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, after after supper and they got the dishes cleared and when the, the girls of course got old enough to to clean, wash and they worked hard in here and um, did a good job. And um, these are Lucy's girls. Aunt Lucy's two daughters, uh -huh, uh -huh. and um, and after they got everything all cleaned up, then the kids, school, 
it all sit down at the dining table. Well, maybe three or three of them would, or maybe two. Whoever was doing primarily writing, mm-hmm. and you had the kerosene lamps. They had a couple of kerosene lamps on the table, and um, and that's you get your homework done that way. Mm-hmm. So you you're know, telling me there wasn't any electricity. None. Do you remember what year you got electricity in this? That they got electricity in this house. You weren't living here then, probably, but. We got electricity in our house the um, in nineteen um, the summer the summer of nineteen forty nine mm-hmm. because I remember I started high school and went my tenth grade year using a, a kerosene lamp to do my homework mm-hmm. and um, and there they they ran the line up. Up Curlew Road, and they got to the, this house before they made the corner and got to ours. I think they got the power here in about 47 or 48. I see. Okay. And um, and then do you know when water lines came in here so that they got county water? Oh, county water hadn't been here that long at all. It, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they used the well. Oh gosh, they were using using the water out of the well. They didn't have running water in the house when I got out of the service. That was that was in 1956. Mm-hmm. They had running water in the mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. And um, was the well water good drinking water? Oh sure, absolutely. Yeah, there was nothing to contaminate it. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, it was soft, very very soft. Oh. Yeah, would make calling and a shame of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, tell me a little bit about the ambiance of the the neighborhood. What it was like. I mean, if you were to stand out on this corner of this busy corner of Belcher and Curlew Road, you'd see traffic zipping every which way and so on. What what was it like back in the day when you were a boy? Okay, at some. Um, um, Curlew Road was paved, mm-hmm. but it was about 12 feet wide, mm-hmm. the whole road. And uh, it was so infrequently traveled that my cousin Phil and I used to, we get out and play in the middle of the road, do anything we wanted to because the car, there weren't many cars. And of course the only road going down to the south was a dirt road that um, Dad had chopped it the trees down and gradually the county opened up that right of way and graded it and made it into a dirt road but it was years before it ever got anything in the ruts you'd just drive in those two ruts and, uh, and um uh, and and that was um oh golly they, they didn't put any pavement down there until until about 19 um about 1956, uh, probably 57, mm-hmm. and then uh, gradually the big building boom started. Right. The freezes came, knocked out a lot of groves, and the people up north, fuel prices started driving people down, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the land boom started then, and, mm-hmm. and when that started, the county had to make provisions for it. They did a pretty pretty darn good job of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, we finally, they, they had the, the road graded all the way through and then finally they decided to, to pave, pave it. When they did pave it, they waited late enough, they just said, well, we'll just go ahead and make it four lanes. Wise and, thing, as it turns out. Mm-hmm. And and certainly uh, influenced this neighborhood. But back in the day when you were a child, do you remember, was this all woods around here? Oh, were sure. there, oh, how, absolutely. You know, how close were your yeah. closest neighbors? Oh, closest neighbors was, um, were, um, let's see, our house was a quarter of a mile down, the, down Belcher. Mm-hmm. And um, this house here, and they had the, um, People usually lived in the little shack down the, there that mom and dad lived in. 
I call it a shack. I shouldn't mm -hmm. say that, but mm -hmm. but it was just a small. It was like a log cabin, wasn't it? Hmm? Was it like a log cabin? No, it was just. just it was a, just like a little dog house. Old, okay, plain little uh -huh. house, grove like, house, like mm -hmm. the grove house. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there was a big two-story house on the other side of the, of, uh, of Curlew Road then. Oh, who lived there? Do you know? Oh, it was a number of families that changed hands, but finally that whole piece of land there uh, belonged. Finally, was got into the hands of the Johnson family. And um, this, you might remember uh, in, in Largo, uh, the, the king, sure. king Sadie was, Johnson, was Miss Sadie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, she was, she was Jack Johnson's wife, mm -hmm. and they lived in that big house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And old man Johnson, I shouldn't say that, Mr. Johnson, <laughs> not not <laughs> not Sadie's husband. But I'll tell you how nice and quiet it was. It was just so peaceful at night. You could hear, um, and and you could hear the birds at night, the night birds, and you knew all the sounds. Everything was quiet. And Mr. Johnson would get hay fever, and you'd hear it like an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> like that, and you could hear him stand in our yard. We hear him sneeze, and and it was that it was that quiet. Wow, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we had then, um, what uh, was that? Belcher then began to build a little bit, and and the family named the Petersons uh, had a a big plot of land right up where Curlew Creek. Cuts mm -hmm. across, mm -hmm. and um, they were wonderful people, great neighbors and farmers. They had all kinds of livestock, and uh, they had a big smokehouse. You know, they were from Lee, they were from Swanee County. Oh. And that, so we always used to, yeah, well, they're from Swanee County, so they know how to do all those things. <laughs> but they were fine people, and, and that's about the distance of how. Down here you had the big two-story house where the Johnsons lived, and then a little further there was right on the, you know, the pond where the, the funeral home is. Yes. Uh -huh. There was a home that sat on the, the <clears throat> east side of the, of the pond. Mm -hmm. And um, then there now was... Now that was a grove at that time, wasn't it? Before it was uh, Curlew Hills Cemetery? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. It was, well... I think it was part of the Billgore Groves. Uh, it was. It was part of it. Was just palmettos. I remember it when I was a kid. Was just what? I'm sorry. Was just. <coughs> was just a big house. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Do you um, know who lived there? Do you mm, know who lived in that house? No. no okay. No. All right. No. Um, Mr. Johnson, that lived across the street with the hay fever. What did he do? What was his? I don't know what his. They farmed. Uh, they were farmers had too. A big grove. Had a really nice grove. Uh -huh. The lunches they had uh -huh. in those things. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful grove. And and uh, he would always, back in the back of the property, was real rich land. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Johnson would farm back there. I see. Raise stuff. Right. And, um, of course, we had, um, a little later, the Joneses, one of the Jones families, mm -hmm. John Jones. Uh, was one of the brothers in the big Jones clan. Yes. He he built a house down there and moved in. And, mm -hmm. and um, so gradually, Nelson built another house up right about, just, it was right behind where the, the um, reclaim center is. So yes. Those big dumpsters are, you know. Right. Yeah. And then a family named Anderson lived in there. I didn't know too much about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a big grove right next to it that went right on down to, almost to um, County Road 1. Mm -hmm. Everything was grove. <clears throat> the whole economy was based on groves. And um, So if, if you could think for just a minute about what it smelled like, my first impression no. when I came to Florida was the pungent fragrance of the Orange blossoms. I used. I remember. I used. 
I used to enjoy my <clears throat> my bedroom in the in the cracker house over there. I had a front bedroom and cross ventilation, and I'd open those windows at night in the some in the springtime, you know, and you just lay there in bed, and you could just smell that that orange and grapefruit bloom with that perfume would just mm -hmm. make the whole area smell better. Mm -hmm. And all, all along that road, County Road 1, all there, going all the way to Dunedin, it was solid grove. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything, there mm -hmm. were houses in there, people lived in there, but it was solid grove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Right. People don't under, people that move in now, they, they can't imagine how it was. And, and as a matter of fact, we have some pictures hanging here of even in the 60s, how dense it was with groves. Yeah, yeah even, even in the 60s, yeah, it was still. So it wasn't that long ago, 50, 50 60 years ago. You know, see, they were, the main. back in my time as a kid, they were still planting grove mm -hmm. and, um, and raising more and more fruit. Mm -hmm. I remember Johnson cleared this line right across the street he owned all of it, cleared it, and planted it in pink grapefruit. It came a freeze and killed every dog on one of them, and so he just gave up on it. Well, by that time, they, they were real estate was selling them. Yes, right. So it didn't take long. Subdivisions came. Right, right. Took the old timers out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you remember any of the kinds of oranges or grapefruit? I mean, the Duncans were very popular. Oh, Duncans. When still the Cadillac of grapefruit. Mm -hmm. And it um, has seed, but it's a, it's a delicious one. We it had is. those, we had Duncan's, we had Marsh Seedless, we had some Pinks, we had Valencia oranges and Homosassa oranges, and you just have a profusion of, uh, of different types, different, mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. breeds. But when the, when the buyers came to buy them and pick them, they didn't, they wouldn't talk about what are these Valencias or the, you just... Well, they were just an orange. <laughs> yeah, they'd go out there and peel one and taste it. If it was sweet, they'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, um, and, and oh, one thing I think is, is interesting is, is the traffic. We had to walk all the way from our place corner and all the way down to the corner of Curlew Road and County Road 1 to meet the bus. The school bus? Yeah. Uh-huh. I started walking that distance when I was in first grade. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, did your mother walk with you? No, my brother did. Your brother did, okay. So yeah. he was your older brother. He walked ahead of me, but uh, uh, he, was, mm -hmm. he was around, <laughs> but uh, uh, it was just um, a, a different scenario, you know, that that too, uh, you, you just wouldn't have the traffic. Mom never worried about me getting hit with a car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom never. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get picked up? Did anybody ever offer you a ride oh, if yeah. there was a car oh, going yeah. by and yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. see we, would you like a ride? A, yeah, we had those different cars. <laughs> and people have funny habits, you know. Sometimes they'd stop, and sometimes they wouldn't. I had one guy who was a carpenter, and he was a good fella. I enjoyed him, and because he's always smoking a pipe, and whenever you get in it, he had a big Buick, you know. <laughs> and every, he'd be going to work, he'd have on nice clean overalls and everything, and he'd be smoking that pipe, and that smelled so good in that big Buick, but he wouldn't give you a ride unless it was raining. Oh, really? Uh-huh. If it wasn't Otherwise, raining, you needed to walk it. Right on by. <laughs> <laughs> but if it was raining, you'd stop. Oh, yeah. Okay, boys, get in. Mm -hmm. so. mm -mm. These are the good times. Right. What we were the bad times? Do you remember bad times? When we got sick, it was, it was bad. Yeah. I had to go to the dentist. Miserable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um... Most of the time we stayed fairly healthy, mm -hmm. and um, doctors made house calls. And um, do you remember who the doctor was who made a house call? Well, it was an osteopathic physician down in Dunedin named Dr. Kelly, mm -hmm. 
And at the same time, Dr. Kelly was there, of course, osteopaths back in those days didn't have much to do with medical doctors. And the local medical doctor, of course, was Dr. Meese. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he built the first hospital, and mm -hmm. I think he had six patients. And it was right there, catty corner from, see the elementary school, where I went to elementary school, was the building, is where the, the county building is now. And um, they might have, I don't think they sold that. But the Dunedin City Hall was there for a while, I think. The Dunedin Police Department. Okay, so you're talking up on Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh-huh, right. Milwaukee yeah. and uh, Virginia, I guess that is. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. right. That mm -hmm. is correct. Mm -hmm. and, and Loudon Avenue was in the front. Yes. But, um, and the hospital was kitty cornered uh -huh. back across mm -hmm. Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember they, they laid it up out of blocks, about like this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was a nice looking building, but they just just had very, very few mm -hmm. beds, you know. Mm -hmm. Dr. Meese started that whole empire out. Mm -hmm. and Dr. It, Dr. Meese, uh, I knew his daughter, and, and you know, Nancy Norton. Yeah. And Nancy told me about hearing about them delivering babies upstairs, uh, up over the store, basically, because they lived uh -huh. in the base of the hospital and in a part of the base, and they could hear the babies being delivered upstairs, new babies crying and what have you. So, yeah. yeah. But the, but you know if. Um, so what if you got sick at home? If you didn't have to see the doctor and you just say had a head cold or something like that, did they use some home remedies? Did I remember people talking about mustard plasters and things like that that yeah, were used well on a, the chest too. They had a wonderful old patent medicine named Mustarole, mm -hmm. and it was and, and it was motto is better than a mustard plaster. But I'm telling you, um, that stuff burns so bad you'd have to get a head start so you could run <laughs> when Dad smeared that stuff all over your chest, you know, and and um, and um, I'd have tonsillitis. My dad was a very um he, he would try just anything, so he'd go out to the wood pile and get some splinters and shave it down and put cotton on the end of it and dip it in the mercurochrome. Oh no. And, okay, open your mouth. Oh <laughs> put it in my Oh my goodness. That's, yeah. And occasionally Aunt Lucy's kids would have to be have to mm -hmm. be taken care of the <laughs> dead. <laughs> but mm -mm -mm. Hey, it didn't hurt any of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you lived to tell about it. <laughs> I don't know it did an awful lot of good, maybe. But, um, but Vic Sav mm -hmm. was a staple. And um, Were there a lot of bugs? Did you get bug bites? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Bad the summertime. Mm -hmm. And uh, flies, mm -hmm. golly, there a lot of a lot of what we call house flies back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. But uh, you you just have to. How did you get rid of the house flies? Uh, we had a spray gun, mm -hmm. old spray gun that you pumped pumped with your hand and had a little jar down underneath it, mm -hmm. and that had preparations like flit and mm -hmm. golf spray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't, I went through a, a, a chemical orientation in the Army, and I found out that those old bug things, they had found out that they had a small, they'd kill those bugs. You wouldn't believe how fast they'd kill them. They had a very, very low strain of parathion in there which is a um, terrible chemical used in chemical warfare. So mm -hmm. that's how mm -hmm. I learned about mm -hmm. it. I said, hey, if you've got any bug spray that has pyrethrins, he said, don't mess with it. Mm -hmm. Well, we did. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, you probably had a fly swatter too, didn't you? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, we had, we killed a lot of flies. We had fly swatters. We had roach traps. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What I had to do was oh, dump the dump the road straps. I mm-hmm. hated that. You not, know, not a good well, job. Take it out and take it out in the chicken yard, and unscrew it and dump it all out in the chicken. See all the roaches. What, so what was the roach trap like? Tell me, tell me what it looked like. Was it a cylinder of some kind, or what? What did a roach trap look like? Round. It had a screw bottom, like a jar, oh. but it was made out of like screen wire. Right. But bait in there, and there was a hole in the top, and it had a little a little thing about that big out of screen wire. But once they dropped in there to get the Food, the bait, uh-huh. they couldn't get back out. I see. Mm-mm. Those things sometimes be mm-hmm. loaded. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. That was bad. We, mm-hmm. we didn't have rats in the house. That, mm-hmm. that was good. Mm-hmm. That was a good thing. And, what uh, about snakes? Were there snakes out on the property? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah many. Mm-hmm. They had to be constantly. Mm-hmm. That one, you know, today it's look out for cars. Back then, be careful where you step, son. You get on a rattlesnake, mm-hmm. and I think Dan so. There were poisonous snakes. It wasn't oh, just yeah. black snakes. Oh yeah, rattlesnakes, water, mo- um, cottonmouth moccasins. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dad, I think Dad killed nine or ten uh, mm-hmm. big rattlers on our place, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, even up to the time when I was, you know. Grown, an adult. Uh-huh. Um, we still there was enough woods around that um, I remember one afternoon he was sitting out under a tree. Dad was when he got old, you know, and he there came a big rattler driving, just crawling right across the, the the backyard. And he got the shotgun and killed him. And mm-hmm. the next afternoon the mail came along. Oh, really? And he got him too. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, it was dangerous. Uh huh. Yeah, my, I know that 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 mom and Aunt Lucy were always concerned because I was wading around in the mm-hmm. you know, woods. You know. Mm-hmm. To, mm-hmm. Where did you get things like ice and milk and so on? Did you have to go to the store for that, or did you have that delivered? I'm talking about here in this house now. Do you recall how? Did you have a cow for fresh milk or? Uh, we, Any dairy? We did. We had a cow at one time, but it was before my time down there. But I, I can't ever remember. The only thing I remember about milk is that Johnson's Dairy was right over Lake Lakeview Dairy. They called it. Mm-hmm. And of course, we knew the Johnson. That was a different Johnson from this Johnson down here. Mm. And uh, they were big. Really, really good people, and had a little dairy, and he'd come by and, and drop them a quart of milk when they needed it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They had Aunt Lucy would do that. She, she got got the milk that way. Or maybe Mom sometimes would bring home a quart from the store, but um, that was milk was you rely on um, canned milk. Mm-hmm. Like first in the morning, for like a pet soup. milk or something. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. She'd pour that in a pitcher mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and dilute it 50-50. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stir it up and then use that on. I see. On your cold oatmeal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, I'd like to wrap up this segment, and I want to have more segments with you, to talk a little bit about Curlew Creek and and did you have fun there? Did you go oh, swimming yeah. there? Oh, yeah. Did you go fishing there? It was within walking distance of the house, so wh- wherever house you lived in, whether it was this one or, or were, were you in this house or were you in the house down on Belcher, mm-hmm. Curlew Creek had to be an important part of your childhood playtime. Oh, it, it was. Um, <coughs> it, um, it was, you didn't have the, the drainage systems that the county installed. And Curlew Creek was the primary drain for this part of the county. And in the rainy season, it would come up over the bridge, this old wooden bridge over wow. the uh, creek. And, um, and further on down the creek, um, I don't know if the, how it got washed out, but there's a nice swimming hole down there mm-hmm. called Slippery Log. Mm-hmm. And now it's down, not down as far as County Road One. It's between no, Belcher between, and County Road One. Between uh-huh. County Road One mm-hmm. and, 
and Belcher Road. Mm -hmm. And you have to walk through the woods, go through the Johnson's place. Nobody ever said anything to there. People were friendly then. Mm -hmm. You could go all over their land and they'd never say a word. Mm -hmm. And uh, go walk down there to Slippery Log and, and uh, in the summertime, before the rainy season hit, you'd be getting real nice water through there because of some springs that fed Curlew Creek up way back up at the origin, which is a little bit, uh, how would I say, it's a little bit east of uh, US 19 was where the origin of the creek was. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. the old swimming hall was used by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that would be, that was one thing, one good place to bathe. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, nice water, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of fun with that, and and um, we fish in the creek. And my cousin and I, Phil, <laughs> we had this enterprise we called fishing through the cracks. Mm -hmm. We take a, a fishing line and put a hook on it, and there was no traffic on County Road 70. I mean. Um, Belcher Road was dirt road, mm -hmm. old rickety wooden bridge across it, and it had cracks about that wide. And you could look down, you could get down on your knees and look through those cracks, and you could see the perch, see them swimming mm -hmm. around, and mm -hmm. you get down, and you drop that line down, and you catch one, and and pull him up, and everything worked out fine until you got one that. <laughs> was too big to you go could, through the cracks. You couldn't get him through the cracks, so you had to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh -huh. see, the, those, are, those are things of our growing up, and Phil and I from memory, we talk about these, doing things like that, never bothered anybody. Uh -huh. We didn't bother anybody. Uh -huh. if, uh -huh. a, if a car, usually, you knew when a, the mailman would be coming. He always came down that way. Maybe another car. I'd say probably five or six cars a day, maybe. Wow. If you saw a car, you thought they were probably coming to your house, right? Because there wasn't a lot of places to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could hear them. You could hear them coming, you know, down right. that dirt right. road. and. Uh, Getting back to Slippery Log, though, were the, was that just kids that went there, or did the adults go there, too? Did you take a picnic lunch there or, and spend yeah, the day I there guess, or whatever? I, guess, I don't know whether they ever, uh, you know, they had a picnic down there and never heard about that, but adult might, that might have gone there, I mean, uh, uh, to swim, but it was... Um, Mostly the kids' swimming hall. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, right. really was, and um, and uh, really uh, the only warning you got when you started, hey, I want to go, I want to go to the swimming hole and look out for snakes mm -hmm. <laughs> and moccasins to look for them there. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. But um, we were very fortunate; we didn't any serious snake bites or anything like that. That's good. And we know had there, there were. <clears throat> people in the community were snake bit. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, we didn't get anybody in our family hurt that way. Bill, in many ways, you lived an idyllic life uh, here in a time that most of us never know about and never will know about in terms of Pinellas County. So you've given us a great perspective of what it's like. But I want to come back with you another time okay. to talk more about um, not just this house, but the house that your father built that you lived okay. down the street and uh, about your own life because you have had, besides talking about your grandparents Glad and your that. parents, yeah, sure. you've had Anytime. a wonderful Anytime. life. Okay, thank you. Bill Pulaski.